Well, 50 years ago today, Martin Luther King Jr. delivered his I Have a Dream speech. Next up, I'll introduce you to a campaign that Bank of America has embraced to continue making his dream into a reality. I have a dream that one day this nation will rise up and live out the true meaning of its creed. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal. Today is the 50th anniversary of the March on Washington and Dr. Martin Luther King's I Have a Dream speech. While honoring Dr. King, President Obama discussed the fight for economic equality here in America. For over a decade, working Americans of all races have seen their wages and income stagnate, even as corporate profits soar, even as the pay of a fortunate few explodes. Inequality has steadily risen over the decades. Upward mobility has become harder. Well, for more on creating opportunities and upward mobility for American youths, we're joined by Mark Edwards. He's executive director of Opportunity Nation. Also with us, Andrew Plepler from Bank of America Foundation. Great to have both of you here on Taking Stock. Thank you. Mark, I want to kick it off with you. We talk about equality, and rightfully so, on, on today, the 50th anniversary of the March on Washington. Um, you specifically at Opportunity Nation, you're working with community groups, with companies, organizations, educational institutions, about closing the opportunity gap in America. What do you mean by the opportunity gap and how wide is it? Well, the truth is, unfortunately, that the American dream in this country is increasingly out of reach. And unfortunately... It hasn't gotten that much better. It has not gotten for better. For many. No. And unfortunately, the zip code that you're born in is increasingly a bigger predictor of how you'll end up in life. And that's run so counter to how we think about ourselves as Americans. And so what Opportunity Nation has done is brought together a whole coalition of about 250 national nonprofits, educational institutions, corporations to work together to create some shared ideas to increase opportunity. And you have an opportunity index that actually says that where is it, where is it the worst, worst in terms of communities around the country? Where is it the best? Well, the opportunity index is, a, is an idea to try to go beyond simply looking at poverty and GDP as a way of measuring sort of our national and civic health. And so we brought together about 15 indicators that create opportunities Economy, for education, Economy, the education, community. Economy, education, jobs, access to the internet. How can you be a community of opportunity if you don't have access to the internet? And so uh, we rank all 50 states and we bundle the 2,900 counties into grades A through F. And? And uh, in, in 2012, um, Vermont actually was the best state for opportunity in this country. Interesting. And Nevada actually was the worst. All right. So quite a, quite a disparity. Hey, Andrew, let me bring you into this with the uh, Bank of America Foundation. And you guys have gotten involved with them. And you specifically have programs to help reduce that gap. Exactly. We feel that Opportunity Nation, first, we want to work with people who understand the issues. So Opportunity Nation brings a tremendous amount of subject matter expertise. Not superficial. With this. their index, they really kind of get down to exactly. it. Exactly. And they give you guidance. They say, look, we've got to address soft skills. We've got to address work skills. And a concept called earn and learn, allowing young people to work while they're still getting educated. So it's a very targeted approach. We feel that we have job opportunities, both with the nonprofit profits that we work with where we can fund paid internships mm -hmm. and in our own banking centers across the country where we can provide young people real skills uh, to learn learn crafts that they can pursue later in life. You have a student leaders program. Yes, we do. And talk to us a little bit about this. Yeah, we have provided 1,800 jobs since 2004 across the country, about 45 cities across the country. Students that are selected by selection committees, they have to they have to be really take the initiative and they get eight weeks in a paid summer internship in a nonprofit to really learn about serving their community and then they all go to DC for a week to learn about civic engagement in the in the profound events in our nation's history like today with the 50th anniversary of the speech and so they get a very holistic view of both job skills and what it's like to be a leader that we think really serves them well. It's interesting. You said you look for, for students who are taking initiative. What about those folks, though, Mark, that, that don't necessarily take initiative and are kind of getting lost in the cracks here? Well, I think the truth is that we have to create multiple pathways for young adults to be successful in this country. We can't think about a four-year Bachelor of Arts degree as the only pathway to success. Mm -hmm. And so, because what we know is that lots of the jobs that are available today are jobs that require some post-secondary training and skills, but don't necessarily require a four-year degree. And so, 
these jobs are actually strong middle class jobs um, and part of what we're trying to do is bring together companies, educational institutions and, and nonprofit institutions to holistically work together to support kids on these multiple pathways. You know, there's, there are so many pathways. I think about education though, that's such an important one. We all talk about, you know, you get an education that really helps you uh, get a leg up. Um, Andrew, you've had a great education, Franklin and Marshall College. You've also got a JD from the University of Miami School of Law. Mark, you went to Harvard. Um, so you guys went to great schools. How do we, though, work with education? Because we know some folks don't even have access to education. They can't afford it. Those who can, maybe they're taking a lot of student loans, and that kind of cripples them, handicaps them later on. Um, how do we deal with education? Andrew, why don't you take it first? Well, I think that there are skills that can be developed without some of these four-year educations. I think that's one of the great guidance that Opportunity Nation gives us, is that there are some technical skills. It's an important message, isn't it? Absolutely, because it, is, it isn't the only pathway. Uh, Harvard is not the only pathway. Law school is not the only pathway. You can learn technical skills and have a very successful career and really have that mobility uh, to move up the economic ladder uh, through various uh, pathways. You know, in the midst of this recession, there are three million unfilled jobs, and lots of these jobs require some kind of technical skills, and those skills can actually be achieved through community colleges and other technical programs, and so part of what we're trying to do is to make sure that these pathways are open to all young adults, because for some, there's going to be much better pathways for them. Well, I wish you good luck with it. Thank you both for coming on. Appreciate it. Thank you. Mark yeah. Edwards at Opportunity Nation and also Andrew Plepler over at Bank of America Foundation. Coming up, it is back to school season.